did you make of the session? A lot of talk about dialing down risk as everyone eagerly awaits that Greece election over the weekend. James, all week we've been talking about the low volumes and just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, today it did. We saw less than $3 billion worth of stock being traded on the Australian market, so not much happening at all. We did see a loss on our market. We saw a negative lead from the US. Moody's also downgrading Spain overnight and Spanish as well as Italian 10-year bond yields are rising. So our market down by half a percent. It was the energy and the healthcare sector leading the losses, but we did see selling across all sectors of the market today. But I guess the biggest thing on our market was the extreme light volumes going through. Less than $3 billion worth being traded. That's the lightest volume. And although it is a shortened week, it does look like investors really remaining on the sidelines. Uh, it's T minus three now towards those Greek elections. On Sunday, we see the G20 meeting on Monday and Tuesday and the FOMC meeting on Tuesday and Wednesday. Wednesday. So some hopes around a policy move at the G20 and the FOMC, but it's really that Greek election that has investors nervous. Thoughts sort of moving forward. I mean, what do you, it's almost if no one can really see Monday, they can't sort of see Tuesday, they can't see beyond Greece. I mean, what sort of a, a market or what sort of an environment are you expecting? Or is it just too hard to tell at the moment because of the level of uncertainty? Well, near term, it's the event risk which is concerning the market. And then medium term, it's the growth prospects in terms of global growth that's concerning. Europe is a big clog in terms of global growth and the global growth engine. It's, it is China's largest export market, which directly has an impact on the Australian market, especially in terms of our miners. So I guess looking at the medium term implications, of course, what could th turn things around in the medium term is a large flood of liquidity and we've seen that in the past and that's really why the market's looking towards that FOMC meeting on the 19th and the 20th of June on Tuesday and Wednesday because it is hoping for a flood of liquidity because we've seen what it's done to risk assets in the past and that is to inflate them especially in terms of commodity prices so at the moment the market looking at event risk um, hoping for a big policy response to see a turnaround in the medium term sentiment of the the market but really being driven by having a look into uh, what the future holds and I guess we started off 2012 on an extremely positive note but with the European crisis once again rearing its head we know the impacts that that has in terms of the global economy and in terms of risk assets and we're seeing that starting to play out I guess the the flip side is that these extremely low volumes do start to signal that we have seen a certain amount of capitulation in the market so if we do see a big policy response come through the response from risk assets and the market should be quite big as well but these volumes extremely concerning under three billion dollars being traded it does look like a lot of people sitting on the sidelines and I guess it's a difficult risk to gauge as well the Greek election there's no polling in the two weeks lead up and even if we do see an anti-austerity uh, coalition government that is able to be formed there's no guarantee that Greece will leave the euro we could see the olive branch being extended out talks ongoing um, and I guess that's more also kicking signals the can down the road is that what you're suggesting Julia <laughs> more kicking the can down the road Unfortunately, every time we kick the can down the road, it seems to be a shorter and shorter distance. About our portfolio positioning in these sorts of markets. Uh, before we do, there was a bit of corporate news about Julia, an interest, a very interesting one. Uh, Fairfax Media, an interesting parcel, parcel, I think about 25 million or so dollars worth of Fairfax shares uh, traded, one big trade today, and everybody jumps to the, you know, the big conclusion, Gina Reinhardt uh, in amongst it. What have you made of it? James, we did see an Australian Financial Review article talking about Gina Reinhardt increasing her stake or looking to increase her stake to 19.9% and a large parcel of Fairfax shares going through today, 42 million shares at 60 cents, which represents about 1.8% of the company. Now, this is a company that we have talked about in the last couple of weeks, and it has come to the attention of a lot of people because of valuations. We know media assets, retail assets are probably near cyclical lows and there's been a lot of talk around takeover activity or pro uh, uh, private equity play and a possible breakup because if we have a look at the valuation of Fairfax for one dollar worth of assets at the moment on the market you're paying 30 cents so that's a price to book value and that's not including tangibles of 0 0.3 so the market really indicating that if you were to buy this business sell the assets on market that you could receive a lot more so there has been a lot of speculation around private equity of this asset it's got a market capitalization of about uh, a of about 1.4 billion dollars and just trade me alone is worth around about 800 million dollars we know that Fairfax had been trying to sell off its radio assets for about 300 million dollars 
as well. So if you're talking about value stocks, well, Fairfax valuation is extremely attractive. But of course, the, 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 the fact that we are seeing a bit of interest in terms of turnover, adding to speculation that we're seeing Gina Reinhardt interested in the company, initially 19.9%, um, and that should help to support the shares and put a bit of a floor under the shares as well.